Let me take a moment and talk about Riverside.fm. It allows you to record studio quality audio and up to 4K video. When you need to record audio and video, Riverside.fm can do it. So if you're looking for a hero platform for all your recording needs, from podcasts to webinars to any video content, Riverside.fm. I've got a promo code for you where you'll receive a 30% discount on the first three months of your subscription. I'll give it to you twice. The promo code is ship it. All one word, ship it, and you'll pick up a 30% discount on your first three months of your subscription. Riverside.fm. In this episode of the Football History Headlines and the best of the Pixie and Dispatch, we discuss the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets team that won the 1926 NFL title on this day and many more Hall of Fame legendary stories and birthdays all coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigSeeAndDispatch.com, your portal to positive football history. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, where we are here talking about football history once again, as we do every single day of the year. In this episode, we're going to be covering the football events and historic events and the people that were born on this day that are in the Hall of Fame and the college and the pro ranks for December 19th. When we talk about days that are extraordinary, days that really make you have some surprise stories, stories, December 19th has got to be right up there with them as we're going to take you on a crazy ride as we talked about in the beginning. So let's start off with it. On December 19th, 1926, the National Football League's championship game. With an outstanding 14-1-2 record, the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets claimed the title. The best record at the end of the season determined the NFL champs in the first dozen years of the fledgling league. The Frankfurt franchise dates back to 1899, where after a couple of decades, the Jackets became one of the premier independent gridiron squads in the nation. Frankfurt officially joined the NFL in 1924 and went on to post a respectable 11-2-1 record in that initial season, according to Penn State Research article that we have on pigskindispatch.com, a link to. The 1926 season, though, was a tough one as the Pennsylvania law prohibited games on Sundays, so the Yellow Jackets would often play games back-to-back days, home on Saturdays, then away on Sunday. The signing of Guy Chamberlain, who was with the Canton Bulldogs as a player coach in 1925, made a world of difference for the Jackets. Guy led the Frankfurt 11 to a 12-1-1 record heading into the most important game of the season versus the undefeated Chicago Bears and their star player Red Grange. Philadelphia's press was calling the game for the NFL title, even though each team would have two other games remaining on their respective schedules. More than the first half of the game was a defensive stalemate. Chicago finally broke through in the scoreless tie with a touchdown in the third quarter, but Guy Chamberlain managed to block the Bears' extra point. The Yellow Jackets drove the field with little time remaining, but faced a critical fourth down and three deep in Bears' territory. There was only one choice, and that was to go for it. On this vital play, Houston Stockton completed a touchdown pass to two bits Horman to tie it up on the scoreboard. Frankfurt made the extra point, and the Jacket victory put them alone the top of the NFL standings. Frankfurt would win their last two games while the Bears tied the Packers and beat Pottsville for second place. Unbelievably, Frankfurt's 14 victories in that 1926 season remained an NFL record for 58 years and finally broken by the 1984 San Francisco 49ers who achieved a 15-win season. If you take a look on our pigskindispatch.com website page for this December 19th, you'll see where we have the standings for the 1926 season, as well as the 1927 season, which we'll talk about next. Because on December 19th, 1927, the New York Giants, with a stellar 11-1-1 record, earned the NFL championship game. It was the third year in the league for the Giants, and it was the franchise's very first NFL title, according to the Bleacher Report. Giants shut out 10 of their opponents and allowed only three touchdowns to be scored against them in scoring delta of 197 points for and 20 against for the sum total of their games that season. 
December 19, 1947, the Fort Pitt Hotel, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Washington Redskins chose Harry Gilmer from the University of Alabama with the first pick of the 1948 NFL Draft. Gilmer had a nice nine-year career with the Redskins and later with the Detroit Lions. Players picked later in the draft, though, were arguably more productive years were Bobby Lane, picked fourth, and Y.A. Tittle picked at number six for the American Football Database. The Redskins also had the fourth pick in this draft, where they draft Gilmer's Crimson Tide backfield mate, Lau too. December 19, 1948, at Cleveland Municipal Stadium, the Cleveland Browns demolished the Buffalo Bills 49-7 in the AAFC Championship game, according to the ProReference.com website. Also on December 19, 1948, at Shribe Park in Philadelphia, it's interesting that the AAFC decided to put their title game on the very same day as the NFL's. Yes, the National Football League Championship game also kicked off on this day as the Chicago Cardinals faced the Philadelphia Eagles. According to the PFRA's Ken Crippen, who put together a really nice article on the game, temperatures at kickoff were a frigid 27 degrees. Field maintenance workers had to remove almost 5 inches of snow off a tarp that covered the field surface, but strong winds and heavy snow kept falling throughout the contest, forcing the stadium lights to remain on during the whole contest of the day game. The snow was so bad, Crippen wrote, that members of the officiating crew were assigned to guess where the goal line was and two others to guess where the sidelines were. Trust me, as an official who worked on a grass field during a snowstorm, it's not a pleasant experience to find where the white lines are in the white snow. The game itself was pretty much dominated by the defenses, as his only scoring in a game came in the third quarter when Cardinal Ray Mofolt fumbled the ball at his own 17-yard line and the Eagles pounced on it. A few plays later, Philly's Steve Van Buren carried the ball over the goal line. At the end, it was the Philadelphia Eagles blanking the Chicago Cardinals 7-0 in the Philly blizzard. December 19, 1976. A Piper Cherokee airplane crashed into the Baltimore Memorial Stadium upper deck of the stands just minutes after the Colts and the Steelers game had got done playing in the NFL. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt, although Baltimore police officer Joe Sacco was hit by the aircraft, according to a Stattered911.com website. In the game, it was just completed, by the way, the Colts lost to the Steelers 40-14. We'll just take a short break from our football history headlines for a second. Just to remind you, we have a great website, pigskindispatch.com, where you can find all these football history headlines, plus more positive football on all of your great uh, heroes of the game that are, and all the great things that they do. We also can be reached at pigskindispatch at gmail.com. And now I'm also a member of the Sports History Network, where we have a great group of podcasters and bloggers that get together and talk about sports history. And here's a message from one of them right now. This is Jeremy McFarland from the Footballist Family Podcast. And I want to encourage you, if you get a chance, to come over to the Footballist Family Podcast where we look at what makes football special and family to each person. We talk about each team and we talk about the stories behind why fans love those teams. We encourage you to come and join us in our discussion. Thank you. It's now time to pull that cake out of the oven and throw some candles on it because we're going to talk about some Hall of Fame birthdays for this December 19th. And we'll start off in the year of 1909, Seattle, Washington. Notre Dame's guard, Frank Norty Hoffman, was born. His bio on the NFF website states that in 1931, the Associated Press and Liberty Magazine named him to their All-America teams. The National Football Foundation selected Norty Hoffman to enter their College Football Hall of Fame in 1978. December 19, 1926, Santa Ana, Texas. Bobby Lane, the legendary University of Texas quarterback, celebrated his birth. We just spoke about him earlier in the uh, NFL draft that happened in 1948. The National Football Foundation says that Bobby was not what one would call a great runner nor a classic passer, but what he did out of the T formation was remarkable. In 1945, Lane missed part of the season serving in the Merchant Marine, but returned near season's end to help the Longhorns reach the Cotton Bowl, and he completed 11 of 12 passes and was part of all six Texas touchdowns as the team blew out Missouri 40-27. to by the time Lane had finished his college career, he was an All-American and set 11 school records on the gridiron. Bobby Lane found his way alongside the College Football Hall of Fame in 1968. Lane then went into the National Football League and continued a record-setting career with Detroit and Pittsburgh. 
As a Lion, he threw a clutch last-second pass to help Detroit win the 1953 NFL Championship game. During his 15-year career in the NFL, Bobby had two seasons where he was voted as a first-team All-NFL, four other seasons as a second-team All-NFL, and claimed the 1956 NFL scoring title. The Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrined Bobby Lane in 1967. This next Hall of Famer is one of the greatest that ever played. December 19th, 1961, at Chattanooga, Tennessee, the awesome University of Tennessee defensive end Reggie White shined into this world. The footballfoundation.org website states that many people called Reggie many things, the Minister of Defense, while some opponents called him a nightmare. As a member of the Vols defense, he set records such as getting four sacks in one game, 15 on the season and 32 in his career. White was a unanimous All-American and held the SEC Defensive MVP honors as well as being a finalist for the Lombardi Award. The National Football Foundation selected Reggie White to enter into their College Football Hall of Fame in the year 2002. After his collegiate career, Reggie White was signed with the USFL's Memphis Showboats where he played for two seasons before joining the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL. During his 13-year career with the Eagles and the Packers, he was an NFL Rookie of the Year, an 11-time Pro Bowl performer, and a member of the Super Bowl winning team. The Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrined Reggie White in the year 2006. Boy, we have a lot of great Hall of Famers that were born on this December 19th, and the next one's no exception. December 19th, 1964, from Phoenix, Arizona, Arizona State's great guard Randall McDaniel was born. Randall was a two-time All-America on the Sun Devils offensive line and helped the team go to three bowl games while on the team, including the school's first appearance in the Rose Bowl in 1987. The NFF voted Randall McDaniel into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2008. McDaniel played for 15 seasons in the NFL, both with the Minnesota Vikings and the Tampa Bay Bucks, and earned 12 trips to the Pro Bowl. In 1996, Randall received the honor of being named to the NFL True Value Man of the Year for his charity work. The Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrined Randall McDaniel in the year 2009. December 19, 1972, Orlando, Florida. Warren Sapp, the University of Miami's great defensive tackle, was born. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers used the 12th pick in the 1995 NFL Draft to choose Warren to play for their team. Sapp was the 1999 Defensive Player of the Year and made All-Pro four times and played in seven Pro Bowls. With the Bucs, he won Super Bowl 37 against the Raiders, where he registered a sack, two tackles, and two passes defense. Warren played 13 seasons in the NFL and registered 96 and a half sacks in his career. He played the last four seasons of his brilliant career as a member of the Oakland Raiders. The Warren Sapp was enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the year 2013. December 19, 1974, Boise, Idaho. The quarterback from Arizona State University, Jake Plummer, celebrates his birth. The NFF states that Jake was a first-team All-American in 1996 and that Jake the Snake finished third for the Heisman Trophy after leading Arizona State to an 11-1 season. Jake Plummer found his way into the College Football Hall of Fame in the year 2019. In the NFL, he played for the Arizona Cardinals and then later for the Denver Broncos. We're certainly glad you could join us today for these December 19th history headlines, and we hope you can come back tomorrow to see the December 20th football history headlines, where we'll talk about Howard Cosell retires. The first professionally played gridiron player is born, and the 1925 NFL crown gets stripped in controversy and given to another team. To make sure you get notified the second the next edition of this podcast is released, please put your mouse cursor over that subscribe button on your podcast player and crush it like an offensive tackle hitting a DB. You can also find all all of the episodes of your favorite podcast provider on pigskindispatch.com or the sportshistorynetwork.com, where you'll also find many other great nostalgic sports stories and interviews of podcasts with an all-star cast of podcast hosts and guests to share some of the greatest history sporting events. I'm looking out at the defense, and I've got backers crowding the line. I'm going to call an audible and get on out of here. And tune in tomorrow for more Pigskin Dispatch. If you want to get contact us, we're at pigskindispatch at gmail.com, and we'll see you tomorrow, folks. We encourage you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, and uh, hit us up on the email, pigskindispatch at gmail.com. See us on Twitter and Facebook, too, and uh, subscribe to this podcast. We'd love to hear from you. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network. 
your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. <laughs> Isn't it just? A poster sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website, where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) <laughs> Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delft discovered the splendiferous magic of row one sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can, too, by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R-O-W number one today for access to the full row one catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act today for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at Check out and keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer, coming soon. Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row1 and save 15% off your order.